Bit, yeah. Just by. It sounded pretty loud and uh, joyous. Well, I think it's um, first of all, it's you know I'm blessed to be a part of this organization. The coach to bring me in, um, you know, I'm, you know, you come in as the only new guy, and I think guys are trying to get a feel for you. Uh, like coach told me on the phone when he was going to hire me, he goes, "I've heard a lot of good things about you. You've been around a lot of winning. Uh, you know what it takes to win, and uh, to come into this culture." And all these guys are such good guys, man. And uh, they don't complain. They work hard every day. Like I told them, you established this culture. And I'm just, I'm blessed to just to be a part of it. Um, what does it do for you when you have a guy like Haku Kakazo who's so, <laughs> you know, you know what you're going to get and, and just a ball of energy. And it's obviously the, the crazy stat line he had tonight. Right. I, I think that. You know, the, the thing, we don't have a one-point guard. Like I said, you know, we just had a guy fly in uh, today. Jones just flew in, you know, for, uh, as a replacement. You know, I feel bad for Austin because, you know, I'm like, okay, we can play Austin at the backup one, and we know he's not a one. So what I was trying to do is uh, when, when Faku was out, make 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 Joker a one. <laughs> so I was like, okay, if Faku's out of the game, getting a break, so maybe Joker can handle the ball a little bit and, and, and be, you know, point center. Uh, but Faku was great. I thought he was great on, on the offensive end, running pick and rolls, getting in the paint. And then defensively, he was defensive player of the game. He was all over the place. He had eight deflections, five steals. Uh, but his penetration, I, I thought, was a, a big kid uh, to this game tonight. Outside of Faku, what did you like best about what you guys put on court today? Uh, you know, it's, it's a work in progress with the new guys, you know, uh, Tuck is awesome. Like I said, I had Rajon Tuck. I, I know you guys saw the one defensive stand that he made. I, I knew he would be good against a team like this who, who likes to attack downhill. He knows how to, he's very good at staying in front of the ball, uh, playing defense, being physical. Um, I thought that, you know, it, it scared me to death. Obviously, when Joker gets uh, the third foul, you know, you try to challenge it. You thought he was straight up. And he had to come out of the game, but we were able to survive that run. Um, you know, the start of the game, you know, they jumped on us quick. I, you know, I tried to tell the guys before the game that this team plays with a lot of pace, and I don't think we were really quite ready for their pace, the way they play, and they jumped out on us. And I thought our bench came in uh, that end of the first quarter and, and really got us back in the game and, and uh, you know, closed that quarter out really well. 47 points in that second quarter. Yeah. That was a big deal. What was going well there that quarter? Uh, you talked about it earlier. I think it was a lot of Falco, obviously, getting in the paint. We were able to get stops. Uh, we were able to get out and run, but Falco, oh, you know, he orchestrated it all, man. He, he was awesome. Uh, I, I wish I could have played him 48 minutes if you want to know the truth. But, you know, they kept, uh, got, the coaches were awesome. They kept telling me, hey, Falco needs to come out and get a breather. You know, I'm trying to get him out and get him back in. But I thought, again, uh, getting stops on the defensive end, uh, we finally caught up with their pace. I kept talking about it during the timeout. Um, we started defending them better and getting stops, and then we were able to get out and get some easy baskets. And again, in the half court, Faku was awesome. You said before the game, you always wanted to do this. Uh, uh -huh. What was it like being in the big chair? It's a thrill. I, I know it would be. Uh, you know, you, you wait for this moment, and uh, a lot of fun. A lot of fun, guys. Have you heard from Malone yet? Uh, I didn't get my phone. I didn't have time, so I'm sure he'll call me and. Uh, uh, you know, you hate the circumstances, but, you know, like Coach told me, uh, take advantage of the opportunity, and it was a lot of fun. Uh, you know, again, you know, got a lot of people in the area. You know, I've done summer leagues. I've done, I don't know, four or five summer leagues, but you guys know uh, this is a lot different than doing summer leagues uh, uh, on this stage. And, you know, we'll, we'll get some cleanup, and we'll go to Dallas and try to get another one. That's the, that's the fun thing about this. Can you sense the guy's trust uh, in you building throughout the game? You mentioned the rough, the rough start, but can you sense just, okay, eyes are on me, I can handle this yeah. now? Yeah, you know, I, uh, I've always been told by, you know, mentors to just coach to your personality. And my personality is kind of laid back. It's not, you know, real fiery. So I just try to coach to my personality, you know, try to keep everybody calm, try to stay positive and tell them to keep pushing. And uh, again, again, the ball started going in. We started getting stops, especially late in that first quarter because they probably thought I was going to panic uh, the way Houston jumped on us early in that game. You said that the ball was going to probably get I thought it was great. I thought the uh, one of the plays that really stabilized us uh, when we couldn't get a basket in the third quarter, 
And I said, you know, heck, we don't have a lot on the court. Let's go to bowl and see, can he get us something? And he was able to uh, get on that left box and turn and shoot. And I thought that was a big, big basket to stop the momentum. I thought in the fourth quarter, he got tired. You know, he hadn't played in a while. And I was, uh, you know, we asked him during the timeout, can you play the whole quarter? And he said, yeah. And I was laughing with him after the game. I was like, no, you can't play the whole quarter. That's why I tried to get him out and back in because I didn't think he was moving well. Uh, he had obviously uh, coming off of COVID himself and, you know, hasn't had a lot of live basketball. You know, it's not like we're practicing a lot uh, other than doing individual workouts. How did that change Barnes and It's funny. He said, congrats. Uh, he said, congrats, Pop. And he had two, two <laughs> uh, uh, whatever, like swabs sticking out of him. I said, are you okay? And he said, yeah, I'm okay. So I think he'll be fine. He took a nasty hit. And, you know, that's another guy again, you know, we've had, a, I know every team in the NBA has gone through a lot this year. This is a, a rough year. And uh, again, you know, that next man mentality uh, from the players to the coaches, you know, Concord uh, coming back, you know, he was supposed to play just three minutes stints. You know, I think he, I probably played him a little longer than, <laughs> than he was supposed to play tonight, but he was terrific, uh, you know, uh, doing things, just being him. He just knows how to play. He knows how to space the floor. He knows how to pass. And 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 you don't have to run anything for him. And guys like that, you know, are valuable. Uh, if you look around the league, if you can find guys that you don't have to worry about them guys getting the ball and running things for them, and they keep playing defense, they keep rebounding, uh, and they're always in the right spots offensively he's a very smart player celebrate no uh, just you know it's middle of the season you know uh, I've been doing this for a long time nothing to celebrate just to go watch film and try to clean things up and get ready for another game yeah thank you, oh, thank you guys